Hello team and welcome to another ATP Geopolitics video with myself, Jonathan MSP. This is the Ukraine War Frontline update for the 23rd of May 2023. Let's get straight to it. We'll go to the northeast sector, the Kupiansk to Svatova to Kremlin front line. Uh, a bit of activity activity reported in the ISW. Russian forces continued limited ground attacks in the Kupiansk direction. The run, Russian MOD claimed that units of the Western Group of Forces stopped three Ukrainian sabotage and reconnaissance groups about 20 kilometers southeast of Kupiansk near Tim Ivka, Kislivka, and Ivanivka. Uh, a Russian mill blogger warned that Ukrainian forces may be prote preparing to attack positions of the WMD on this sector of the front. I don't know. I have mixed feelings about whether there will be any significant counteroffensive activity along this axis. On my map, that looks like, oops, like this. Uh, you have the Kupiansk up around here. You have Svatova here and Kislivka. This is a general area they're talking about, even if Ka, um, Kislivka, so on and so forth. So some activity perhaps there. And then it goes on to say Russian forces continue ground attacks and have made incremental advances south of Kremlin uh, as of May the 22nd yesterday. Geolocated footage posted on yesterday indicates that Russian troops have advanced near the filtration station on the southeastern outskirts of Bilohorivka. So as we come down this front line, we pass areas we used to talk about all the time. Uh, Ploschchanka, Chavona Papivka, not heard much mention of them at all recently. And in the forest here, there have been some advances for the Russians here in the river area, the Sversky Donetsk River. And then we are talking about this filtration uh, unit or um, installation there. Now, I had that as both controlling that because I wasn't sure. I wanted some geolocated footage. Now I'm confident that that is controlled by the russians so as we look to this geolocation we have the condor aerial reconnaissance unit destroys the russians at the filtering station near belarivka and we have uh, the confirmation of the coordinates here and where that's taking place and so on and so forth so there's three coordinates set around that so i would safely say that is being controlled now by the Russians so I've adjusted my map accordingly um, and then really it's a case of coming on down uh, now that, that that is over we can come on down to Bakhmut as you can see not much else to report in that area so we come on to Bakhmut which features so prominently now it's always at the, at the top of the ISW daily report so uh, let's come down on my map and show you Bakhmut here we go. And it is really a day of not a great deal of information. I don't know whether there's operational security going on here. I don't know if actually the Ukrainians have kind of stalled a bit, whether Russians have piled in loads of loads of reinforcements as we know they have that that has caused the ukrainians to stall but as i mentioned previously that's kind of their intention anyway it doesn't really matter whether they are taking huge amounts of territory or not the objective here is to fix and attrit the russian forces so they continue to do that it doesn't really make a difference whether they take territory or not now someone called me out on that the other day pro russian said well of course they want to liberate territory and you have different it's like in philosophy you talk about first order desires and second order desires right there are first order objectives and second order objectives so the first order objective, you can say the overarching one is to kick Russians out of all the territories of Ukraine. Yeah, OK, that's what you want. So they need to kick them out of this area here, Bakhmut. They obviously that needs to happen. But actually, that though that might be the overarching desire, there are sub desires within that, which is, OK, we want a desire in order to, to, to reach the goal of kicking Russians out of Ukraine. We need to have a massive victory in particular places, like, for example, Zaporizhia and Crimea. So in order to achieve that, we need the Russians to be attrited and fixed and attrited in other places, like, for example, for example, Bakhmut. So we don't need to kick them out of this territory necessarily here right now. That will happen eventually. But actually, the, our, our primary objective for this particular area right now is to attrit and fix the Russians, particularly fix them, I think, here. So 
yeah, that's what they are doing. So you could argue that the Ukrainians are succeeding here without needing to take huge amounts of territory. Okay, what does the RSW say? Elements of the, uh, no, that's, I'm going to talk about that at the end, sorry. Um, that was to do with uh, going into Belgorod. So Va Wagner Group financier Prigozhin claimed that Wagner forces will withdraw from the entire front line uh, in Ukraine after June the 1st in order to reconstitute and train for about two months. I say this is culmination. Other pro-Russians say oh, it's not culmination. They agreed to take back and they're just pulling out. Well, that's one and the same thing. You know, it's not either or, it's both and. They've culminated, clearly culminated. They, are, they need a good rest. They're going to reconstitute. They've admitted that's what they're going to be doing. And that is, I could show you the definition of, of uh, you know, culmination. And that fits into the definition of culmination. In fact, where is that? I'll go and find it for you. So if we look at this military doctrine, uh, US military doctrine uh, monograph here, the culminating point and US Army tactical doctrine. And we go to, I think as I was reading page 31 earlier of this, uh, just pop down. Um, lots of stuff on culmination uh, uh, here. Uh, Characteristics can be found at divisional and core level management. Blah, 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 blah. Discussions on sustainment, momentum, reconstitution, offensive and defensive operations all lead to the importance of the commander identifying not only his own culminating point, but also that of the enemy. So the culmination involves all these things, sustainment, momentum. So when you run out of momentum, you need to reconstitute. Uh, you've got your defensive and offensive operation to consider, blah, blah, blah. That is kind of culmination, so on and so forth. Anyway. It seems pretty obvious to me that the Russians have culminated and and uh, and they have also taken they, they can't go on any further. Uh, yeah, they said that our intention was to take back. They've done that. Brilliant. They can go off and do whatever, sun themselves in the on the Mexican beaches or whatever. I don't know, but they don't have the ability to carry on. They have no momentum. They have no other troops left to, to use. Really, they've been uh, invalidated from recruiting in in the prisons so that they've got no other option but to take this break in order to to re to gather themselves uh, so the two month reconstitution period Prigozhin has announced could have Wagner forces sitting out key parts of the Ukrainian counteroffensive depending on when and how it begins um so okay what has been going on geolocated footage published on May the 21st shows that Wagner forces advanced towards the T0504 entrance to southwestern Bakhmut so let's go and have a look at some of this geolocated footage we have a Russian flag being placed here and I did a little bit of geolocation similar to this yesterday. Uh, so this is probably going to be the same sort of area. So the Russian flag has been posted here. And this is right in a southwestern area, uh, which I have under Russian control as according to all the mappers. So remember, the yellow mapper is pro-Ukrainian mapper deep state. Blue is Andrew Perpetua, where the Russian line is, not where the Ukrainians are. And the red is Syriac Maps, but Syriac Maps is taking some time off till the end of May. Um, okay, and then there's a Russian uh, Russian position in this building, which is here. And that's, yep, so again, same kind of area. Then we have some shelling. Now, I think this is Ukrainian shelling of Russian of the Russian building and you might recognize the red roofs uh, roofs of that building there which is here uh, but just in case you know you don't trust your eyes we can go to someone else's eyes which is geolocated um geolocation there so that's shelling taking place and I think that is Ukrainian shelling of Russian positions as I've mentioned so it appears that Russians uh, could well be in control of this last southwestern area near the MiG monument, so on and so forth. However, there are claims to the contrary. So uh, if we go to um, Deputy Defence Minister Malia says fighting slightly decreased in the Bakhmut sector over the last day while the number of fire attacks is consistently high. Our troops control the city's southwestern outskirts in the airplane area, she reiterated. So that is the general area we were just looking at. Uh, we hold a number of buildings in Bakhmut, and we still have fortifications, trenches, strong points there, including in the southwestern part of the city, Speaker of the Eastern Group of Forces uh, st stated. According to Cherivati, this is a small foothold in the airplane area, which is being held to prevent the Russians from completely taking the city. And there is an opportunity to deliver ammunition and everything that is necessary for defense. Also, the armed forces of Ukraine are advancing on the flanks. As for 
for the Wagnerites, they do not they do not have shell hunger. They have serious problems with people. There is nowhere to replenish. The losses are huge. That is why Prigozhin is trying to withdraw the remnants of the militants from the city. So this then feeds into the uh, idea of culmination. Uh, Deputy Defence Minister Maliar said fighting in Bakhmut has decreased. As mentioned, our troops control southwestern outskirts of the city, said Ukrainian troops uh, had made a slight advance on the flanks to the north and south of the city. And just building on that, again, this is reported elsewhere. The battle continues. Our defence forces are making progress on the flanks. Uh, and that's according to Sariski, who apparently is definitely not dead. Uh so Maliar said the Ukrainian progress in Bakhmut is insignificant, but Russia is sustaining great losses. So there is, the, in other words, there are some gains to the north and south, but it doesn't appear like a lot. Uh, I'm not getting any information from mappers. Deep State Map seems to have done no updates. I mean, they updated last night, but there were no updates. So there's no movement as, along the entirety of the front line, as far as I could work out. Andrew Perpetua has done no updating, particularly just a tiny bit around Klyshchivka. And I don't know whether that's just jigging things to, uh, to, to get more accuracy. But interestingly, there is a push he indicates a push to the west of the canal here, uh, just by Kurdyumivka. Now he previously had the Ukrainian line going along the canal here, so it could be that the Russians are producing a, a localized counterattack there. It is going to be dynamic all up and down here. The Russians have, uh, you know, sent a bunch of people to this front to to help uh, sustain those lines, and they might feel that. You know, they can counterattack in certain places. No report says to the front. As for the discussion whether or not Ukraine is present in Bakhmut, I can be brief. Basically, all troops have left, troops have left Bakhmut. A covered retreat is being conducted in the black dotted area to allow remaining troops to leave Bakhmut unharmed. Kromova area unchanged. So that's in the area I was just talking about. The official Ukrainian line is yeah, we still got some people there. That could just be PR, it could be PSYOPs. Um, Kromova up there unchanged, but otherwise, you know, the whole of the rest of the city is under Russian control, as according to no reports. South of Bakhmut, based on my latest info, progress is being made in the black square of Klyshchivka. Uh, sorry, it's being made west of Klyshchivka. The exact depth of this advance is not yet clear and will become clear in the coming days. It is clear that after losing strategic positions, Russia has difficulty with its defence. Furthermore, things seem to be happening north of Solodar in the area of Sakhivanseti and Vazyukivka, but there is no information available or no visual confirmation or fo of footage uh, to adjust the map. We'll keep an eye on this. Um, again, he indicates that, or not again, he indicates that the Ukrainians are pushing in all of these areas, whereas uh, Andrew Perpetua had Russians pushing in this area here. So that was the area where they pushed across the canal. So, you know, not really 100% sure exactly what is going on north and south of uh, of Bakhmut. Jeriman, or Geriman, who, uh, if you know your Twitter and socials, he is an just over massive pro Russian, um, <laughs> annoying. Uh, uh, information source, information in the loosest possible sense of the word. Buildings in Bakhmut, uh, in Artemovsk, formerly Bakhmut, yeah, uh, being cleared. No battles, not even on the flanks. There is no encirclement. Ukrainians retreated back to Chazivyar, and the Belgorod distraction is also near its end. Ukraine lost both battles. Uh, he has proven to be wrong so many times it hurts and never admits it. But anyway, his, his understanding, so a pro-Russian position is that the, you know, they're stalling on the flanks. Nothing's really happening there. Um, however, there are, uh, you know, other, as I said, other claims. This is what uh, Rebar Pro Russian Source says. Lots of talk about what's going up, up on up in Belgorod. I'll mention that later. And really, just not at all. I don't think there's any particular mention of activity anywhere other than in, in Marinka. All of this is about shelling and you know drones and whatnot missile attacks nothing about bakhmut at all literally doesn't mention bakhmut which has got to be the first time in like forever um it, just to give you a, an idea of what bakhmut looks like this is a pretty 
incredible bit of footage uh, featured in the New York Times. Um, so we'll just play that and just gives you a sense of the destruction. I know I've said this before and shown you these kind of videos before, but this is one that kind of shows the whole of it and I think is um, is quite, you know, are they, are they actual civilians still around? Uh, just shows you the, just the massive destruction of this entire uh, settlement. It's what a shame. Um, hugely sad the ravages of war but anyway so that's what Bakhmut looks like now uh yeah quite where the lines are I don't know it's a bit of a bit of a lack of information today on exactly what is going on I mean the claims are some gains but not not huge territorial gains uh, and the Russians saying no gains um so yeah we'll move on to Avdivka now and uh, we'll go back to the ISW, which talks. Uh, oh, I, actually, last thing I will say. Sorry, I, I interrupted myself, didn't I? A prominent Russian mill blogger claimed that fighting is ongoing just west of Bakhmut near Kromova. Yeah. Uh, another mill blogger claimed that on May the 22nd, yesterday, the Russian forces attempted a limited ground attack south of Bakhmut near Bilahora. And I reckon that could be, sorry about this, that could be what that attack was there. So that's Bilahora. And there's, there's your attack. So some land gain there. So the ISW does uh, possibly give reference to that. And the Russian informational response to the capture of Bakhmut has thus far focused on competing for responsibility for the victory rather than discussing the resulting military situation. In other words, what do you, what do you guys do now? What do, does Russia do now? Don't stop trying to get plaudits for you know taking the place and whose responsibility that was you need to work out you know tactically strategically operationally what you're doing next okay moving on to Bakhmut we uh sorry from Bakhmut on to Avdivka now the ISW says about Avdivka Russian forces made marginal gains in the Avdivka area as of May the 22nd geolocated footage posted on May the 21st first shows that Russian forces made marginal territorial gains southwest of Pervomysky and what it gives is all of this kind of footage I showed you some of this previously uh that this shows Russian attacks into uh into the Pervomysky area and the Russians losing an awful lot of equipment, uh, as you can see from from this footage. And there, this is one of many bits of video footage. And that's possibly why there's been some high APC numbers over the last two or three days. It seems to have been concentrated in this Avdivka sector. Um, and then th that is geolocated. So there's more footage, uh, plenty of geolocation of it. Let's copy that and see where that, that is taking place. Now, remember, this is what the ISW claims as marginal gains for the Russians. So this is actually behind the Russian line. So again, uh, as is often the case with the ISW claims about marginal gains, I don't think it is marginal gains. It's behind the Russian lines. I haven't moved those lines for donkeys, uh, donkeys weeks. Um, so uh, I don't know that donkeys have weeks, but uh, nonetheless... Here we can look at another bit of geolocation, see if that represents some marginal gains or whether that is comfortably behind Ukraine. Ah, okay, so I've disagreed with the ISW and now there appears to be some evidence that there could be some gains or at least an incursion into Ukrainian territory. Uh, what I would say on the end of that is that they have vehicles going through there and that the, those vehicles are then blown up wouldn't suggest that the, the Russians have control over that. Uh, the question is, then, do the Ukrainians have control? And actually, I would argue probably not. So that shows that that is probably um, grey zone rather than, yeah, and that's that's in Tupovamysky. So there is one bit of footage that's taking place just inside the Ukrainian lines as far as my maps are concerned. I would suggest that that means that that's not Russian control, but Ukrainian, uh, but uh, grey zone. Um so there is that. There's loads more. Uh, you know, here's more footage and more geolocations of vehicles that have been taken out. I'll just do one more. Here are two vehicles uh, being found there, and that is again just where we we saw before. So it looks like they have tried an incursion into Ukrainian territory and been repelled, but that could signify that that Ukrainians don't control as much of this area as I have on my map here. 
and that this is probably gray zone. Right, then moving on to another source. Now, this is a video footage of seven fighters of the 59th Brigade of Ukraine capturing 22 Russians as a result of the unsuccessful attempt by the Russians to go on the offensive near Donetsk. So this is almost certainly going to be in the Avdivka area. And you've got... Um, uh, one of the commanders pointing out with the, with their stick on uh, here. It could be Magyar. I don't know. Uh, two destroyed pieces of equipment, a place where the Russians unloaded, uh, and talking through what, what took place. Uh, and, yeah, 22 Russians being captured by seven Ukrainians. So that's pretty Im impressive. And then we, yeah, moving on from... Avdivka there so that is not much to report outside of what's going on in Pervomysky some quite a bit of activity there but as far as what's been taking place north near Krasnohorivka haven't heard anything since the Russians took a little bit of land there and there was all there's a bunch of activity going on in Krutabalka about a week ago haven't heard anything since then and nothing about uh, Spartak as well where there was some uh, Ukrainian gains previously so I think it's it's fairly stable but activity taking place in Pervomysky and then we come on to Marinka further to the south the claims about Pobjeda but I have not seen that reflected in any other mappers um, that was Syriac maps but they've now taken a bit of a, a sabbatical uh, the um, oh, sorry, I did forget to say this, that uh, Ukrainian Donetsk Oblast head Pavlo uh, Kurilenko has reported that you, Russians are using cluster munitions in Donetsk. Uh, there's been a lot of calls for the US to provide cluster munitions. The Turkish have provided some for Ukraine. It, they would be apparently particularly useful munitions to use in many different contexts on, a, on the front line. One Russian mill blogger expressed concern that Ukrainian forces are concentrating armor for an offensive effort from Avdivka, but another claims that the alleged armor buildup is insufficient for such an effort. In other words, uh, and otherwise, Marinka is just kind of mentioned uh, by the by there as as another place that has uh, that there's been unsuccessful offensive operations. Uh, if we go to back to Rebar, remember there were these claims that about. Um, sort of shelling and whatnot and they only really mention Marienka as a place where there is uh, infantry activity taking place near Marienka the airfield attempted to assault Russian positions located north of the village of Pobjeda the offensive was cut short by precise fire from barrel and rocket artillery uh, this could concern maybe a counter-attack or something going on here I haven't heard no news other than the mapping changes that Syria map had uh, maps had concerning Pobjeda uh, this is an incredibly important place for the U Ukrainians to hold on to Marenka because it stops the town being flanked by uh, from the south. Um, but yeah, so I don't have any uh, any other explicit information about you know who controls what in that area. But we'll have to uh, have to wait and see if anything develops. Now, with regard to the rest of Donetsk, no real news. So Vukladar, Veliko Novosilka, have we come across to Zaporizhia, no news of any activity there. The RSW does make some comment on activities along the Dnipro River. So we'll see what they have to say. Russian sources continue to express concern about Ukrainian positions on the Dnipro River islands ahead of an anticipated Ukrainian counteroffensive. The Kherson Oblast Occupation Administration amplified footage on May the 22nd purportedly showing Russian forces striking Ukrainian positions on unspecified islands in the River Delta with high precision projectiles. The Kherson Oblast Occupation Administration claimed that rumours about Ukrainian forces potentially crossing the Dnipro River and a coming counteroffensive are only propaganda promoting fear and uncertainty. A Russian mill blogger claimed that Russian forces maintain control over the islands in the Dnipro River Delta and that Russian forces drive Ukrainian forces off the islands with aerial bombs. Uh, so there you go. Uh, that's Those are the claims particularly of the Russians, so those are all Kherson Oblast Occupation Administration. So it's what the Russians are claiming about what is taking place there. And then it's a case of uh, pulling out and going to see what the devil is going on. And I haven't mapped this. I don't quite know what to do about this. In the Belgorod region uh, of Russia, where we just north of Kharkiv, we have Belgorod there 
And then along this, oops, uh, I really shouldn't have done that. Then uh, along that sort of river, um, what appears to be a river coming up here, you have, there's a couple of rivers in the area, uh, this attack towards uh, Graveron. We go back to the ISW, who have a whole section on this right at the beginning. We, we learn that, okay. Elements of the All-Russian Pro-Ukrainian Russian Volunteer Corps, RDK, and Freedom of Russia Legion, LSR, conducted a raid into Belgorod Oblast yesterday. Russian sources began reporting uh, yesterday morning that a detachment of RDK and LSR consisting of two tanks, an armoured personnel carrier, and nine other armoured vehicles crossed. So there's uh, uh, Max Pros, the uh, American-built uh, mine... Um, mine resistant ambush protection vehicles, crossed the international border and captured Kozinka, a settlement in the Graveron region of Belgorod Oblast, within 600 metres of the border with Sumy Oblast. Okay, so that is Graveron there. Well, that's Kozinka, sorry, there, driving towards Graveron, um, or Graveron. Uh, uh, several Russian sources claim that the grouping then captured the settlements of Glotovo and Goropodol, although some mill bloggers disputed claims that the attack completely captured Glotovo or Gorobotol, instead reporting the RDK forces only got to Glotovo House of Culture. ISW has not yet observed geolocated confirmation that the RDK or LSR reached Glotovo or Gorobotol. Geolocated footage posted yesterday does confirm the RDK struck a border post near Kozinka before crossing the border with at least one tank. The RDK also posted footage reportedly showing the body of a Russian border guard in the border station, likely from the border crossing near Kozinka. Russian mill bloggers later claimed that the Russian troops retook control of all three settlements. Some Russian sources additionally reported that Russian forces repelled pro uk Ukrainian sabotage groups near Dronovka, about 22 kilometers northwest of Kozinka. The RDK additionally posted footage reportedly outside two settlements near the border area in Bryansk Oblast, but the nature of this incursion is unclear and ISW has not observed additional evidence or discourse surrounding actions in Bryansk Oblast. Uh, there's a helicopter that, that supposedly went down about 80k from there. Warmapper maps it like this. Um, which is to say that there is a grey zone that's contested, but the Ukrainians have, you know, control up to Glotovo, not as far as Graveron up here. Uh, these are Cyrillic um, transcribed uh, or written uh, place names there. So uh, I think that's Graveron there. Uh, and, and that's kind of what's going on as far as the ISW is concerned. And now let's check in with the latest from Noel Reports on this developing situation. So there seems to be reference to the helicopter going down in, in Belgorod as according to pro-Russian sources. So confirmation of that footage of the Russian Freedom Legion uh, or and the Russian Volunteer Corps units near the Graveron border checkpoint. If this is what the local authorities call the Russian trap for incursion forces because they're trying to sell it as a trap. They can roam pretty free and unharmed if you ask me. Uh, meanwhile, Russian news outlets, this is two hours ago, report that additional incursion forces have entered the border area near Kozinka, claiming fights with Russian Federation forces are ongoing and air defense is active. A pro Russian pro-war correspondent, Simonov, shows six 84 RPGs and M240 machine gun and boxes of ammunition, uh, which he, he claims are captured from insurgent forces in the Bilgorod region. Uh, there is a flat tire there by the looks of it. Uh, the Freedom of Russia Legion reports that the Legion, this is an hour ago, and the Russian Volunteer Corps continue to liberate operation, uh, uh, continue the liberation operation in the Belgorod region. Dmitry Peskov on the situation in uh, Bel Belgorod. Sorry, it says Bilhorod. For, that's a Russian version, and Belgorod is a Ukrainian, so it's just trying to work out how to say it. Ukrainian militants, this is Peskov, entered the territory of the region regardless of their nationality, so trying to sell it as a Ukrainian thing rather than Russian uh, you know, Russian people being behind it. This is deeply worrying and requires a lot of effort from us. The special operation continues to prevent this from happening in the future it is not planned to hold a special meeting of the security council a planned one will take place towards the end of the week he said now the village of gorkovsky and the village of uh, shetinovka in the bilhorod region came under the control of ukrainian saboteurs russian media outlets report again trying to work out you know what are the what are the, what's the rationale for this from a ukrainian point of view from a russian uh, saboteurs point of view 
And from the Russian government's point of view, who's buying this? What are they trying to achieve? So on and so forth. As you can see here, Graveron and Kozinka are right here next to the border, but they're talking about places much further away. Now, one would assume that these, the places they're talking about are not as a result of advances from here, but uh, further advances from within the Ukrainian borders uh, to the east. So this is, that's Gorkovsky. They're talking about there as one of the places uh, that is supposedly under Ukrainian control. Um, so yeah, it, it's all kind of happening at the moment. And then the other places, even much further actually to the, uh, yeah, here, Shetinovka. Uh, so that's going to be from within the Ukrainian borders for sure there. So yeah, it, there seems to be a, a developing situation uh, taking place in in Russia. Indeed, there's video footage of them on the move in one assumes the claim is that that's in russia uh so yeah we'll keep an eye on that and see how that develops throughout the day uh but that's all i have for for the 23rd for the time being that that i might map that or i might just see wait and see what actually happens over the next few days to see whether that's worth sort of adjusting maps for um, anyway, please like, subscribe and share. Really appreciate all the support. Take care and I'll speak to you soon.